Here you see my big ass 17 inch PowerBook G4. And today we will install Mac OS X Tiger. Totally legitimate, 100% perfect, just how Apple wants it. I have here um, even PowerBook G4 Mac OS X Tiger install discs. I mean, how perfect could this video could this video be more perfect? That's the question. I mean, there you go. And we will install that. And uh, and we have a, finally a working operating system on here again. Because here right now, um, I messed things up bad. And um, beyond recovery, this, this freezes every now and then. Maybe it's frozen now, we'll figure out. No, it's still there, okay. Really hope it's a software problem, um, but it really could be because I messed so much with this poor distribution here. Uh, I will I will just need to reinstall. But hey, that's it, you know, that's life with PowerPC and Linux. Never goes right on the first try or the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth. But um, then there comes the try where it finally works. Um, you guys really seem to be interested in Linux on PowerPC, so I might want to do a install on here with Linux. I will partition it to have a spare uh, partition for that if you want that. But I also need to make sure what I'm going to use because Ubuntu has really weird problems on this 17-inch model. It works fine on the 15-inch, but on the 17-inch, it's no way it's going to show a signal. I don't know what I'm what I have to do. Uh, as you see, yeah, it, it would be great, but no. So let's reboot that thingy. Shut it down first. And let's boot from Mac OS X Tiger. It's been a while since I installed Mac OS X Tiger. So let's uh, hold on Alt. Is it rebooting or is it shutting down? That's a question because it said reboot. Okay, it's not doing anything, so yeah. Turn it on again. Let's hold down Alt. And this optical drive really is far from sounding healthy, so I hope it manages manages it. And there is a little tux. That's kind of kind of cool. That Apple really put that in here. At least I think Apple did that. They developed this boot menu thing so I think they did that okay we got Apple hardware test should we do that or should we just install Mac OS 10 I think we should just install Mac OS 10 it's kind of nostalgia because Mac OS 10 Tiger was the first Mac OS 10 I ever used and as soon as this clock here unfreezes we can get to it. There we go. Now let's boot. Usually Mac installs are just so perfect and so quick and without hassle that it's just boring for you. But there have been a couple of issues. Um, it's actually ironic, but on later versions of Mac OS X, you think they would improve it, but ha, huh, yeah. Um, I think on Mac OS X Sierra, they, they fucked up my computer and uh, we had to recover it somehow. And on El, uh, on El Capitan, I also had freezing issues, but I think that was due to a faulty RAM stick uh, on, a, on a friend's computer. But now on these old Mac OS X systems, I have also used them quite a lot. They never gave me problems. So yeah. Um, Maybe because everything was a little simpler. Could be. Or they could lack quality. I don't know. So, um... Is that your... F no. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, there we go. I take back everything I said. I take back every single word I said about Mac being so perfect. Oh, my God. I mean, what the hell do you want? Now I'm gonna read that to you because probably most of you guys don't understand German, but I'm gonna tell you what it says. It says the software cannot be installed on this computer. I mean, what the hell? 
This is a fucking original 10.4 disc for a fucking PowerBook G4. And now it tells me I cannot install it because of this computer. I mean, you write really Apple, you really want people to use your cracked software because that is just absolutely incredible. Wow, now I'm really shocked. So, uh, I guess, you know, that that's, uh, that's what we have to do. Okay, no way around it. We got here this totally legit tiger copy that is gonna work just fine and uh i mean what would really be interesting right now is if this would still be illegal after all because i do have as you see a legitimate 10.4 copy i just don't have Apparently the right uh, for the right power book and I could try it on my 12 inch if it would ever work again And on my 15 inch, but I suppose it's only gonna work on a 12 inch because I got it with the 12 inch And it doesn't want to give me the CD back. Why? Let's hold down the mouse Boy, that's also a little thing with Apple. I mean, I really like their machines. They're great computers uh, but they have their little quirks just this for example when you when you want to get your CD back on a PC, you press the eject button on the optical drive and it's going to give it to you. But here on a Mac, oh, you're wrong. You just have to really pray to it. Say, please give me the CD, please. And then it decides not to do it. Because it's, uh, you know, weird. So it's going to boot back up in Linux. And oh wow, that's just so unnecessary. I mean, if I had to easy uh, easy access to this here, I could just say, give me this, put this in, boot from it, be good with it. But no, we have to do it the way Apple wants it. So I really hope the eject key works on Linux. Yes, correctly supposed. The key doesn't work. Um, so I will just go into terminal here and type eject. And yeah. I mean, why do we have to make it so hard, Apple? Really? Actually, Linux, do you know that you're just helping killing yourself? Anyway, you will get back on there. You're pretty useful. So now let's put the tiger disk in. And um, reboot it once again. And then hope that it's gonna like this installation medium. Read it. Read it. Read it. And yeah, it's reading it. There we go. Another Apple boot screen. Hooray. No spinning wheel yet. Where's the spinning wheel? Where is the spinning wheel? There is the spinning wheel. Now I'm happy. Now I want the spinning wheel to freeze because then it's gonna load the welcome screen of the installer. I've done that way too many times as you can see. <laughs> I know everything. So let's see if it likes this disk. If it now doesn't like it, I will just connect a uh, another Tiger machine I have and clone it on there. Okay. Let's click continue. And we click continue again and accept. And accept. Oh, cut that mouse is so worn out. Okay. Okay, we don't have a volume here. 
just yet. For that, we need to go into disk utility. Hehe, <laughs> disk utility. When is it gonna be? There it is. And yeah, that's still a disk utility somebody knows how to use. So it's gonna be quite easy to do what I wanna do. And that is formatted into two partitions. Why two? Again, because I wanna run Linux on there in the future. And I don't wanna wipe out Tiger for that. So we have a 150 gigabyte hard drive in here, which is quite spacious for a laptop from that era. And I'm not sure if it's original. Um, I could be, it could be that it might have been upgraded, which is good for me. So we'll have two partitions. Partition number one will be Macintosh HD. And partition number two will be free space. And we'll make it a little smaller. We'll make it 40 gigs. That should be plenty for my Linux experimentations. And yeah, we got a nice 109 gigs of Mac OS 10 storage. So let's partition it. Enough did we are done partitioning. We can start with the installation process. So we'll go to here and select Macintosh HD and click on options. And then we have Mac OS 10. And yeah, okay. We click continue. And we click here. We don't want Drucker Triber. We don't want fonts. We don't want additional languages but what we want is x11 okay and now let's click install and click install and now it should be ready oh no it's gonna change it's gonna it's gonna check if the installation media is good it's not good should be good, so let's skip it. You know it's installing. Yes. Yeah, this was back in the days where you didn't have one CD, you had four CDs. Now I unselected some options, so I only need three CDs. So let's put in CD number two. There it is. Now I think this... PowerBook actually has a DVD drive, but uh, I burned this on a CD, so I have the CD version of Tiger. Because I have so many computers which have only CD drives, and uh, so yeah, that's why I have it. So let's continue with number two, where it's going to do stuff, and then it's going to reboot, it's going to ask me for number three, and then we should be good. CD3 CD3 If I can get it in <laughs> That tools I was like I don't want to do this anymore But come on just this one CD that's all you have to do And is it gonna go? I once actually had a, an error message here, but it's looking good. Oh, this <laughs> this one CD all 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 it installs is X11. Wow, yeah. Oh crap! I missed the amazing intro video. Well, sorry. Just look it up if you really want to see that. Do -do 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 -do. Those days where they had that. 
It felt you were like booting up a special operating system because no other one had that. Don't wanna do that, yes, do that. And hey, we got here actually Wi-Fi, though I'm not sure if it's gonna connect, so we'll figure that out. Okie dokie. It appears really to uh, have connected to my internet, which surprised me. Because I had problems in the past with Tiger connecting to my Wi-Fi for whatever reason. It was really Tiger once I updated the computer to Leopard or so it works just fine. So, hmm. Maybe this is a different kind of wireless chip here. Okay. <laughs> Haven't seen that in a while, but here we have the Mac OS X Tiger uh, desktop, the default desktop. And as you see, yes, it really connected here. Um, I'm finding out that this mouse button is sort of broken. It sometimes reacts and sometimes not. And uh, sometimes it does it later. I will show the percentage. 18%. Of battery life is in here hasn't been charged in a while and what I want to know is if I can set it to um, tap to click but not sure about that in that with Tin Tiger oh yeah there we go that looks good it's much nicer to use now though so you don't have to slam on the mouse key to get it to do something and uh, this old version of Safari, oh my god. Safari 2.0. So that's some vintage stuff. I know a website it's gonna load just fine. What? Huh? Wait, what? What do you want? I mean, I don't want to go to Google. It just has nothing to do with Google. But Google works, as you can see. Let's go back to the website I wanted to show you. It's always going to Google. What, what the hell? Let's try a different one. It's going to Google. I don't want to use my Google thing. Get the fuck out of here, Google. Okay, let's let's uh, install some important stuff here, like the 10.4.11 update. They still offer that. That's kind of nice of them. Mac OS X Tiger is really a couple of versions behind now. Now we have version 10.13, and now this is 10.4. So a lot of versions between. There we go, version 10.4, that's really old. One gigahertz G4, one gigabyte of RAM. I suppose this was the best OS to use on this, just because of this one gigahertz chip. Um, and the graphics card, I think that would also not perform that good on Leopard. And I have uh, my other G4 PowerBook running Leopard, so... Um, I have here a nice fast Tiger machine. So we, here we have the 4MX. I think that's not the same as I have. It's a little worse. See how many cycles that battery has. Holy crap! 597 cycles. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's not too new. Could be that it's really the original one. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't save 708 milliamps we have left. Here we go, that's what I was looking for. 
um, and the full capacity is 3600 it's kind of awesome that it's still actually at least doing something I mean with 597 cycles that's quite a bit I mean I've seen more but the fact that it's not showing any weird percentages or so I mean looks like it's not broken or so like in my iBook G4 this thing holds for one minute and uh, there it says 100 percent then it says 80 then it says 90 again then it says 40 then it says 10 and then it says 50 and then it shuts down but this here looks pretty good um, not that I will use it uh, with a battery but I will try maybe see how, how good it still runs um, but first let's get these updates installed and uh, yeah by the way Tiger was the first release to have spotlight kind of cool fact I use that all the time okay it's a couple of days later and now I've completed my PowerBook G4 Tiger installation here I created a nice little Tiger machine handles it very well uh, it's very fast with this one gigabyte of RAM um, and uh, I would really go with Tiger on a system like this just because how much more uh, like lag free it is and less resource hungry and I'm not talking about power Mac G4s or G5s that have more power but this one gigahertz and one gigabyte of RAM you know it's not really all that much but 10.4 handles it pretty good now I installed some software here, the latest iTunes version. I think it's 8.2, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there you go, 8.2. That's like, uh, I don't know, you can still sync some old iPods with it probably, but that's really all it can do. Other than that, it's pretty outdated. The last, like, the most up-to-date version you will get on a PowerPC is on Leopard 10.6, I think. But that is also right now, again, two versions behind. And uh, yeah, so yeah, not that you can do a lot with it, but you can use old iDevices at least. Now when it comes to web browsing, I got here the latest one you can get, like the best and latest one. And this browser here is really as good as it gets when it comes to by browsing on PowerPC, this is 104 Fox, and as it says in the name, 104 stands for Tiger, 10.4, but of course it also runs on Leopard. And these developers are really awesome. They still implement some up-to-date features of, uh, of Firefox, of Mozilla. That's why they call it a fork of Mozilla for Fire for PowerPC. Um, and they're awesome because the regular Firefox release is version 3.6, I think that's so old, oh my god. Um, I kind of lost track of what release we're at right now because they always update that, like, feels like every day, but a couple of versions and the, the regular release is very outdated. Now this is uh, actually not too bad, it can display at least the web pages fine. And that is also a problem with the old web browsers available for this. Now the downside that with this browser is that it's really hard on the resources as you can see. Uh, here we got YouTube loading up. And yeah, it's as you saw, not really fast. And it's also probably going to use quite a bit of RAM. Um, yeah, 200 megabytes is actually not too bad I mean for an up-to-date browser would kick ass but yeah for this old ass machine from 2003 or 4 with only a gigabyte of RAM of course that's uh, not so easy for it but at least you still have here the ability to look at up-to-date web pages like fancy web pages um, Enter the wordstat.com. That's probably gonna kill it, but I just want to show you that it can do it. Um, although, as you see, it's really not snappy at all. 
Um, I would recommend using this on like a Power Mac G5 or any kind of faster power PC with more RAM and more processing power. Then it should be quite usable, but here, well, it's uh, not really fast. But again, this is a very demanding website also. So if you try to, to launch that in the regular Safari, and this is not, I think, the up-to-date even, or is it? Let's see. Now I'm kind of slamming that poor machine here with this Watch website and then also launching it some programs. Safari <laughs> uh, 4.1.3. Oh, OMG, yeah, that's not too recent. I'm gonna kill 10 for Fox for now. It's uh, really slowing things down. Let's see what it does here. And I also installed some other apps like Microsoft Office 2008. Because I had it and yeah that should be quite it Let's see how it does oh god what is that mm -hmm. yeah that doesn't look too correct um, yeah I mean almost here this looks pretty good still. I mean, this old Safari for being a good seven years old, it's holding up pretty good. But yeah, it's definitely not that great. But it is still usable, at least. It's not like Internet Explorer 8, where it's absolutely unusable for pretty much anything. Uh, it says here we need a later version, but we're not gonna get a later version, unfortunately. Uh, let's see how it's looking. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, look at that. And as you saw, it was actually faster than the 104 Fox, even though it's older. And that's just because it's just way uh, less demanding. But yeah, it's... Uh, Still not great and uh, still resource hungry, of course. And here we have Microsoft Office. Let's see how long it takes to launch that. And that is also the latest version you will get on the PowerPC 2008. The, late, the next one requires Intel, I think it's 2011. Then the next one, although I'm not too sure. But this is still like more than I ever would need, so that's fine for me. Just need, needing some updates here, but yeah. Let's kill all of this. Give it a little more RAM back. And yeah, I also installed iMovie HD. Oh no, that's the internet connection thingy. Let's put that in the dock iMovie HD that runs like a champ on here unless you actually want to edit HD then it's probably gonna slow down quite a bit but I used to edit some DV tapes with poor quality on my other PowerBook G4 and it was handling it very well and I used iMovie HD for that so yeah but up to date video editing is not really a thing on this system anymore and yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything you will see today. This is my PowerBook G4 17 inch back alive. I also got another partition for Linux, maybe in the future. But right now I got a nice Tiger machine. And yeah, hope you like it. And see you in the next video.